So hello and welcome to this video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how you can run Excel VBA code a thousand times faster. So we're going to start with a task and I'm going to use the basic code that you'll normally see beginners using. And then I'm going to improve the code as we go along so that the final result will run a thousand times faster. So our task in this video is that we're going to read through 100,000 records and we're going to copy records where the first name is equal to Imani. You can see the first example in A2 and there's about a thousand of these records in total that we're going to read. So when we find these records, we're going to copy the row and we're going to paste the row into the output worksheet. So the result of our task should look like this. Now let's look at the code that we're going to start with. So the code we start with here, it's very basic code. Now I'm just going to explain just kind of the start of this code. So the first bit of code, we're just getting the worksheets that we're going to use. We're just basically putting them in a variable. In the second bit of code here, what we're doing is just clearing what's on the output worksheet. Now we use current region. Current region basically gives us all the adjacent data on a worksheet. And what offset does is offset moves it down by one. And the reason we do that is because we don't want to delete the header row. Because otherwise each time in the code we have to write it out at the top or we have to copy and paste it. So this means that we put the row in place already and it doesn't clear it. Now we use the micro timer because we're going to time this to see how fast or how slow it goes. And then we have the main code in the middle. And at the end we get the time again and we subtract the first time from the second time and this gives us how long it took. Now the code in the middle, I've called it the main code, you can see the code that we're starting with here is very simplistic, simplistic code and what we're doing is we're activating worksheets, we're selecting worksheets and all this kind of thing. So this is stuff that you should never do in VBA but people often do this when they start with VBA because they don't know any better and there's lots of code or examples on the internet that show select and copy and so on. So we're going to run this code and we're going to see exactly how long it takes. Now it takes quite a, a long time, so obviously I'm going to pause the video and not have you wait through it all. Now you can see that this code took 142 seconds to run. Now obviously I paused the video while it ran or we'd be just staring at the screen for a long time. So 142 seconds is quite a long time just really to run through 100,000 records. And as we go through this video, we're going to do things much faster. So let's copy this value that we have and we're going to paste it onto our worksheet. So 142 seconds. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to remove this selection stuff. So first of all, we'll take the, the worksheet activate lines and we'll delete them. So delete the activate and delete disactivate. So now we've got a bit less code. Now here you can see that we select the range and then we use the selection copy on the range on the next line. So we don't actually need to do that at all. We can just do a straight copy on the range. And likewise, when we're pasting, we don't need to select the area we're pasting and then do a selection paste. We can just do a straight paste. And you can see the code, there's a bit less code, but let's run this code and just see the difference in timing. So now you can see that the result of this is 51 seconds. So just removing the selects and activate worksheet makes a considerable difference to the timing. So let's copy this to our results worksheet. Now you can see that it's about 2.76 times faster, but we're going to speed stuff up even more. Now the next thing we want to look at here is that we want to do assignment rather than copy and paste. So copy and paste is how we, it's basically like how we do it manually. We do a copy and then we do a paste. So instead of this, instead of doing a copy, we can do an assignment. So we can take the range that we're copying and we can say the value of this, I want this to be placed in another range. And the other range is of course this one. So we want the value of this to be placed here. So we can get rid of these lines 
And this is what we call assignment. Now, one difference we have to do is that when we assign, it has to be the same size as the destination. So we just have to make this range a little bit bigger. And I'll just make this, just put this down for a second. So what we do is we resize the range. So the range is the same size in terms of rows. It's going to be, the, it's going to be one row. And the number of columns is the number of columns that we're copying from. So we just do columns.count. And then we assign that to equal the value. So that's how we do assignment using copy and paste. It's much faster than using copy and paste. So let's run this and just see exactly how long it takes to run. So you can see that this ran in nine seconds. So this is a considerable improvement on what we started with. And again, let's copy the result to our spreadsheet. So you can see now that we're up to about 15 times faster than what we started with. And this is by removing the selection stuff and doing assignments. Now the next thing we want to do is turn off the calculations. When the calculations are on, they can change values when we're trying to run the code, which can cause problems. But the second thing that they do is that they can slow it down a lot if we've got a lot of calculations. So what I like to do is to put this, rather than put it in every single macro, I like to put it in its own sub. So we'll call turn off stuff. And then down at the end, just before we finish, we say call turn on stuff, which basically turns everything on that we've turned off. So let's bring it up to screen and we're just gonna start with calculations. So sub turn off stuff. And what we do is we say application dot calculate calculation and we assign this to be manual so that calculations won't automatically update and then when we're finished and we turn it on again we basically set it back to being automatic and you can see we call this here in the code so let's run this code again and let's see exactly how long it takes to run so you can see it took about one and a half seconds. So you can see there's a massive kind of change once we remove the calculations or turn the calculations off that it actually goes much, much faster. So again, let's copy this value and let's place it on our spreadsheet. So you can see now we're 94 times faster than before. And that's from turning off the calculations. So the next thing we want to do is along the same lines, we want to turn off things like screen updating. So we say application dot screen updating equals false. Now screen updating, we won't get a big kind of change out of screen updating. The real change with screen updating comes if you're doing copy and pasting, but it's still good to just turn it off and turn it on at the end. Now another thing we turn off is enable events. Now this only really will make a difference if we actually have events. And so events are like if we have a worksheet change event and that gets changed or that gets kicked off when we change something in a cell. Now, we, we turn off these events not really from speed, but, but from safety. And the reason is that we can kick off events and the events can change data on our spreadsheet and we don't know that it's happening. So we can get really crazy results. And another thing is that if we keep kicking off these events, it can actually cause Excel to slow down or even crash if it keeps doing it over and over. So it's always a good idea to turn off events. And then at the end, we'll turn them back on. Now we turn them back on by simply saying true. So setting the value to true. So, okay, so now that we've got that done, let's run the code. I don't expect there to be a huge difference really in speed, but as I say, it depends really on what you're doing. Is So not really a huge difference. And one thing just to keep in mind as well is that if we keep running these values over and over, they will vary a small bit. So there's, so, there's not really much difference between turning off the selection in this case, turning off the screen updating, but in certain cases, it makes a big difference. So if we'd done it at the start when we were doing selection and everything, it would have made a considerable difference. So we're down to about one and a half seconds and we're about 95 times faster. So now we're going to use what we, instead of assignment, we're going to use an array. Now what, what it means is that when we use an array, we're actually running through stuff in memory. So rather than actually like going to the worksheet, 
getting a value from the worksheet, reading it, then writing back a value. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to put it in an array and then run through the array. So how we do this is instead of saying dim RG is range, we say dim RA as a variant. Now variant means that VBA will decide at runtime what it will be. But essentially this code, assigning this code like this, what it does is it basically puts all the values from the worksheet into an array. And then we just run through the array. So we run through the array like this, we do L bound, and we have array one to U bound. So it's from the start of the array to the end of the array. And the one means that we're going through the row because it's a two dimensional array. And here we say array i comma one. And then when we want to assign the value, what we actually do is use a second loop. We do for j equals, and we say l bound array. So for the from the first column to the last column, which is u bound array two. So this will run through the columns. And we say next j at the end. And we just have to define j as a long here, and then we've got j. So how we do it is we basically we basically have our array, which we know is i comma j. And we're basically, we want to put out the value, just like we were doing before, we put out the value, but we basically say, sheet output row and the, the actual value. So we're gonna use cells here. So cells allows us to use a number for the column. So in this case, we're saying cells at position, at row, whatever the current row is, and at column J, we want to assign the value. And then we just say value equals this. So in other words, what we're doing, just to say it again, is we're basically taking all the values from the worksheet and we're putting them straight into memory, and then we're running through the values in memory. So this should be much faster than running through the values and keep having to go back to the spreadsheet. So let the proof, as I say, is always when we see it actually running. So let's see the difference that this makes. Now, of course, before we run, we should just remove this line and then we will run the code. So now you can see that it only took 462 milliseconds, so less than half a second to run. So this is the difference in putting the values into an array. So again, we're gonna copy that to our spreadsheet where the results are. And you can see now we're 300 times faster. So now we're really going to go to kind of the last trick in the toolbox and we're going to use the advanced filter and the advanced filter should even be faster than what we've had so far. Okay, so to use the advanced filter, this is basically how we use it. We basically need our data and in our data, we perform a filter on it and we copy the result then somewhere else to which will be our output. But we use the advanced filter. We use this range here as the criteria. So you can see the first name, Imani, is in A2. And so this is the criteria. If we put a last name or phone here, it would also include this. So how we use it in our code is actually quite simple. We'll just get this back to being the range that it was. And then we can just actually get rid of all this code. So this is the other beauty about the advanced filter is that it actually doesn't require much code. So we just use advanced filter and we say copy to fill filter copy and then we put in the criteria range, criteria range, which we'll create in a minute and then the range we're gonna copy it to. So the range we're gonna copy it to, we put in in a minute also. So we can do it in one line, but I just want to be kind of clear on what I'm doing. So range, and we'll call this one the criteria range. And we set this to equal the sheet, which is, this would we'll say this workbook, we'll do it this way, this workbook dot worksheets, and then advanced filter ADV, and the range is going to be range A, now let's just put this down. So the range is going to be A1 and current region. And again, current region just gives us back data in all the adjacent cells. So it gives us back the current the range. 
of all the adjacent data. So sheet output and the range, and the range is A1 to H1. So that's the output range. We're basically putting in all the columns. So let's pop this back up here and let's run the code and just see how quickly it actually runs. So you can see that even though it was running quite quickly already, almost half a second, it's now down to 98 by just using the advanced filter. So 98 is considerable improvement on what we started with. So let's copy this value to the spreadsheet. So the value is 98 and you can see that it actually ran 1451 times faster than the original method that we used. So you can see all the different techniques that I've used today here to make the code run faster. And you can adapt these to your own code and your code will run a lot, lot faster than if you hadn't used them. Now, sometimes I hear from people whose code is taking hours to run. So my advice in that situation is to get a small sample of the data and, tr and basically time how, how long it takes to run and then apply some of these methods to that and see if it makes a difference. And then when it does, you can just apply it to a bigger set of data and keep going until you've applied it to all your data. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it. If you want to hear more about my videos that are coming up, please click on the subscribe button. I release one new video every week. And if you have any kind of comments or anything, please go to the comment section below and drop me a comment. I answer them all. And that's all for this video. I hope to see you on the next video.